look in the corner. And he's out. Hey guys, I'm actually about to head out and do a landscape project that I was mapping out to do next week. But I just got a call from the the rubber mulch uh, distributor from Florida. And he told me it'll be arriving in one to two hours. I'm like, what? Moreover, I don't want this product just sitting in the client's yard without the landscape being started. So I'm going to go ahead and head over and do the tear out today. Stay tuned. Good news! The guy just arrived. Check him out. He's right there. And it is 12.20. So they're right on point on time. 12.20. So I'm going to get this product, put it on the driveway or something close by the house so we don't have to travel as far. And I'm going to go ahead and do this tear out. As you guys see here, the delivery driver was struggling to pick up the pallet um, due to all the weight. One of the bags had burst over to the bottom of the pallet, which was preventing the force from lifting. So we had to unload the pallet the manual way, 50 bags. I didn't come there with intentions to have to unload the truck uh, bag by bag, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to get the job moving forward and continue on schedule. All right, guys, we finally got it all offloaded, and now I'm trying to make sure he, uh, he turns this corner without hitting this grass. Um, one of the neighbors of the property that I'm currently working on, she was uh, very uh, cons considerate of uh, the truck size, and the last uh, landscaper, I guess, that was working on this street uh, made these inventions right there, so she's not wrong. So I'm going to make sure. I told the guy, hey, let's be mindful when we're bending the curve here. Uh, try not to... Uh, run over the grass because I got to work here and I don't want any bad blood. All right, buddy. appreciate it, man. He's in the corner. And he's out. All right, guys, I'm back at you with another one and I'm about to remove some more shrubs here. This time I'll be moving all of these here this is a palm tree here that we'll be removing tomorrow i'm gonna use the second half of that i feel like it might be pretty heavy the root root ball but i'm about to remove one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen and nineteen 19 shrubs <clears throat> on the flip side I'll be removing this this big boy here as well I'll be removing that one today um, I actually created a design here uh, after doing it uh, for doing the tear out and I'll be installing some flax lilies some fire power nandinas, some ground junipers, some sunshine ligustrums, and also some one or gem boxwoods um, right here in the front area. But of course, I got to do the tear out first. So stay tuned. Sometimes when I'm removing shrubs, I alternate blades. This right here is a 12 inch Diablo carbide metal blade. Um, I'm currently using a nine inch, but I use a longer blade so I can make sure I get the farther reach and I can get under the bulb a bit better. So I'm gonna be swapping this one out here shortly.
All right, check this out. You see how this blade bent on me? This is the 12 inch blade. I believe this has a less durable build than the nine inch blade that I use with the three TPI. This is actually a five TPI blade. Um, notice the tips are very sharp on this blade still, so it still can be used, but usually when a blade this long, the tip of it hits the, uh, the root or any little rock in the dirt or whatever, it tends to bend. So to avoid, just keep trying to bend it back while I'm trying to work, I'll get the more durable nine inch blade. Put that one on and I shouldn't have any issues. I've ha never had an issue to wear the nine inch carbide blade bend on me just because it's a, a durable build, it's shorter. Um, it's just a little bit more stable for the cutting. All right, guys, this is a good example of, you know, when you're close to the foundation of the house, sometimes you run into tougher roots. Um, I'm thinking there's a thick root right here that I can feel a bunch of resistance with a 12 inch blade. Um, it just wasn't doing the job. It seemed like it was bouncing off. And as you see, it actually bent. Um, that's because the front of the blade must have tapped the head on with some a hard root or a rock or whatever's in the ground. So it bent it, but it's still usable but not in this case the teeth on it is still you know good to uh trim some other shrubbery but just not this one i mean i switched over to the nine inch blade uh, with a three tpi and i'm more than sure it's durable enough to cut this root so i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how i can get it out as of right now i think i cut around it enough to loosen it up a little bit as you see i can rock it back and forth but there's something that's uh attached going this way i'm gonna go ahead and get it out a few signs that I look for when I'm removing shrubs is one, I look for the sound of the reciprocating saw to increase. That lets me know I cut through the shrub. Um, two, I look for the resistance. Like if the shrub is shaking around a bunch, it lets me know that I'm caught up on a primary or secondary root. So that resistance of being caught up on that root, I make sure I break through it and that lets me know I got the shrub cut. Boom, as you guys see. See that diameter right there? That's what I was cutting into. That's about three, three to four inches right here, guys. Probably three, three inches going across, but the 12 inch wasn't actually getting it just to due to the blade not being as durable. Um, but as you see, when you've seen it slide, when you've seen it, when it's jumped over, that means I went through the root and I actually cut it. And it didn't take long, it took a few seconds. But however, if I was to use the 12 inch, I'll probably still be fighting with it right now. So on to the next shrub. Got that one out. So check that out, just as I thought, some larger roots at the mid part and the lower parts of it. So sometimes when I'm cutting as well, uh, I'll cut straight down in the ground and go around it the best I can. And if it's still not moving, cause it's gonna, it's gonna have, you're gonna have some of those shrubs. They won't even budge even if you cut a full circle around them. But then you do your wiggle, you, you grab one of the main, branches that won't break when you rock it back and forth and that'll loosen it up a bit so you can uh, have a little bit more space to get right next to that shrub you want to push it say for instance if the shrub was right here right now um i would have pushed it that way of course and it would have opened up a gap right here slightly more then instead of going straight down i take the blade and i go at a slight angle like probably like a 30 degree angle to cut under the roots under the uh, shrubbery and I do all that all the way around as well until I get it um, I had to switch to the 12 inch of course because 
uh, the nine, nine inch blade. It was durable enough to cut through it, but it wasn't long enough to reach the root. So it took me a bit longer to do this one than the other ones, but I'm gonna keep it going. All right, guys, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven more to go. This one here, that one there, these two, and then I have two over here. So two, four, six, eight. well I got three over here. I got seven more to go. I'm gonna make sure I get all these out, and then I'm gonna get all this, uh, gotta get all the grass out of the bed here before I actually put down fabric um, to make sure we don't have a bunch of weeds and grass growing within the beds shortly after install. Just want to place everything kind of in place at least these uh, flax lilies to make sure I have enough and currently right now it's looking pretty good uh, I think I want to add a few more on the side it wasn't included within the design but for the sake of continuity I'm gonna go ahead and take these all the way back to the fence there and that'll take an additional six six with a three and a half feet spacing um, this area here I'll be putting some sunshine regustrums here and here, and then I have three uh, winter gem box woods right there. Uh, in between, I have some firepower and endinas to kind of offset the back color. I'm gonna go ahead and get these flex lilies and put them back on the side here. It looks worse before it gets better, guys. But that tear out is usually the hardest part. Um, and I kind of want to make sure. We're not spending too much time tomorrow when I got my guys with me so we can actually get it done in efficient time. All right, guys, so just got those two palm trees out. The smaller one is being uh, disposed of, the larger one going towards the back of the yard. Um, next, we're gonna be clearing out all the grass that's kind of in place. They just got these uh, concrete edging installed. So uh, the goal is to make that a nice, beautiful landscape. So of course, before we do that, we gotta tear out the grass and other portions. A little bit winded. We actually shovel this thing. Um, three guys shovel, one wheelbarrow, and was able to get it up. The uh, palm tree will be going back here in the back area, as you see. We'll be cutting off some of the top foliage before we actually put it into the ground and also we'll be staking it and I'll be composting around the base to make sure got a nice little base down there and that's, that tree should thrive in that area um, it was actually in the landscape beds which that tree gets much much taller so wanted to make sure we got it close away from the house as possible
barrier down. Got a little bit of debris blowing up. Come along, come along. I'll be clearing this off, blowing this off before we put the mulch in. That way it's nice and clean. That'll be the final thing though. Got this last piece, this tree here, and the uh, left side of the home left to do. Gotta fill this hole here from uh, that big shrub that was there yesterday. And these are our plants here that I'll be putting in. All right, guys, so we got all the uh, fabric down, got the beds cleared out, removed all the grass out of the area. Um, next thing I did was stage the uh, plants. Street light. Um, stage the plants. Um, I got a few more that I got to put on the back side here to kind of offset these uh, uh, flax lilies. Um, then I have some firepower Nandinas, as you see. As of right now, what I'm doing is kind of prepping the holes for them. Um, I put them in place, but I want to make sure uh, they look right from the road. So I went on this side of the driveway down the street, and I came from this way down the street, and I looked at the house straight up to make sure the plants are uh, staggered because you don't want to have, you know, being that the fire power and Andinas don't get as large, they're a dwarf nature type plant. So what we'll be doing is making sure they're visible <laughs> from the roadside by not um, putting these flax lilies directly in front of it. And on the flip side, um, to stagger that row, I'll be putting some uh, sunshine ligustrums on the very back side and also some winter gym uh, boxwoods. So the winter gym boxwoods is really what's going to kind of offset it. And then we're going to be putting down some black rubber mulch. But I'm just prepping the holes right now making sure they don't get out of place um, as we continue to go along. Because if we move the plants and then when we get done, the plants are in place, uh, I'll wait for it to one to be, you know, offset. So putting them in place, cutting the holes for them so there's no misconception where it needs to be put at. And the easy piece is putting down the mulch. That's the last part we'll be doing. like videos like this feel free to subscribe turn on that bell notification and it'll keep me bringing you great content like this